Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the first ever episode of the Beaver Train Podcast. This is the podcast where we learn more about the beavers of BVU, where they've come from, how they got here, and uh, every story in between. And today, my first guest is uh, a very amazing individual doing some amazing things here on BVU. Um, it's Tanner Frost. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very humbled by that. It's uh, it. <laughs> it's been a it's been a crazy journey for you so far, my man. It's been a uh, Crazy two years, done some great things, done some uh, some fun things here at BB, and uh, and uh, we're we're here to talk about it. So, I wanna I wanna kind of get started with um, kind of your initial look of BB. So, how did you? So, because you're from um, where exactly? Boone. It's so, just two hours south. It's right next to Ames, about fifteen minute drive. So, it's kind of a it's basically a suburb of Ames, and the fact that a lot of people go to Ames to hang out and do stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's it's about a 20,000 population town. Yeah. So, I mean, because I, I was about, I think I'm about an hour away from where you live exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you initially find BV? Well, I had never heard of BV until my brother committed to play football here. He was three years ahead of me. So we actually got to play a year here on the football team because I play for the Buena Vista football team. And I had, honestly, I don't remember the day he committed, but I know he was going to be at Buena Vista and I had never heard of it or another IAC at the time, now American Rivers Conference School. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, Central, I guess, because our team had a uh, a football camp there. A, a football, our football team had a camp there that we'd go to every year. But I really didn't know about Division Three football at the time of me being a freshman and everything. You know, focused on high school mm-hmm. and stuff. But yeah, he, he came here, and I'm like, well, where the heck is that? I don't, I don't know where Storm Lake is. Uh, since the direction isn't great, I guess, but you know, started coming to football games here, um, learning about Buena Vista. The the old coaching staff had introduced themselves to me. Um, very friendly guys. They mm-hmm. got along with my family very well and very personable. And then from there, just coming up on on visits more and more, I got to learn more about BV, where Mason lived, uh, my brother, and everything, and just kind of began when I was a freshman in high school. Yeah, and um, I mean, so far enjoying it. Oh, absolutely! Second year in yeah. and, and whatnot. Because I, I was thinking you were a junior, but no, you're you're a sophomore. I am a junior standing. Standing, I mean, right? Junior standing. I I could say I'm senior because I am senior standing. Yes. But yeah, I know I get you. Um, so you you come here for football? Has it um, you know, because you came from Boone, which is kind of a a bigger. Uh, well, not really city, but bigger town for football. We're three A in football. Yeah. Yep. So three A. So you so play the second highest. Yep. So you guys play like Harlan. Well, yeah, because you, you guys play Harlan. Uh, we don't play no. Harlan. We our schools we tr- uh, traditionally play in the Iraqi Rivers Conference is like Gilbert, mm-hmm. um, Ballard. Not a fan of them, but <laughs> uh, let's see, DCG who should probably be four A. They're pretty big. They're outside of Johnson. Yep. Uh, in Des Moines, but uh, Carlisle. T- towns like those are traditionally in our area. Perry is a, a team that's always Carroll, et cetera. So. Yep, yep. So, so, so the bigger ish schools, but yeah, not. So, yeah. so you move from going from Boone, which is of course a, a love man too, to uh, college football. What was the biggest change for you in that kind of aspect for like upcoming, um, say maybe people like you who went to Boone or went to like Des Moines area schools? What's what's the biggest difference you saw going from high school football to college football? Well, it, it's kind of a generic answer that a lot of people say, but in high school. If, if you're going to be a college football player and play at a level of, you know, of a standard that the American Rivers Conference usually sets, because we're a pretty darn good football conference. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good teams. I mean, Wartburg is always really, really good. Central's really good. Buena Vista is striving to get to that level, obviously, at the moment. Not quite there. We're getting there. But everyone on their high school team was, in some sort of way, they were the man on that team. They had a lot of focus. Their Their stats were good. Um, and I'm not trying to like talk myself up, but I, I was an, 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 a two, two year all conference player and a captain, team mm-hmm. captain on my high school team. And I had always been recruited by Buena Vista, like I said, by the old staff, the Andersons. And when Coach Mooring and the new staff took over, they just basically talked talk to me right away. I mean, Mason was still here. And um, it, it was a really quick transition for me because basically they said, hey, you were getting recruited by the old guys. We want you just as much as them. And I think the biggest difference for me is that going from being the guy to down in the lowest rung of the totem pole as a freshman is kind of hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why some retention levels are pretty low for a lot of schools um, in athletics that when you're a freshman, you're not going to see most, I mean, 80% of freshmen won't see the field 
at all in any sort of way. You might play special teams. You're fast enough. Not really the fastest guy, so I didn't <laughs> get to do that. But I saw the field barely, mm-hmm. and I understood that. And I said, well, next year will be my chance. But you're so much undersized compared to guys. Um, you don't know the game as well. You're playing in a completely new system, offense, defense, everything. So it's really just a change of worlds completely for you. And you, it's going to be hard. I mean, yeah. no doubt about it. For who are, whoever you are, even if you're an all-state player, it's going to be a hard change. And I think just the biggest difference is physicality, mentality. Everything is at such a higher level that when you're a freshman, it's a hard adjustment. Yeah, no. And, and I mean, and especially true for, for D3 athletes. I mean, you guys don't get scholarships. I mean, you get little – I mean, I don't even think any money according to nope. two NCAA rules, um, which, you know, you think about it. I mean, that's that's a lot of commitment for something that's volunt- essentially voluntary. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mad, mad respect for, for athletes like you guys who, who, you know, do this on the basis for love of sports, which, you know, we, we need that. You know, it's the uh, – the uh the, the pride and joy i mean i've met plenty of people who went to who went here to bv played sports um my let's see my principal did uh my assistant coach did my other assistant coach did my uh yeah a lot, a lot of people from my hometown came here to bv and played sports and in in yeah i mean it's a it's a thing that they carry on for years and years to come yeah so. and, and teachers at my school my head football coach was a cornerback for being Vista in the 70s wow uh my math teacher joe bass she was a uh, a women's basketball player for BV, and she's a good one too. So, mm-hmm. uh, the, quite a few people in my community were University grads as well, and like you know, we're upwards of sixty percent people on campus compete in some sort of athletics here at the D three level. So, most everyone who leaves Vista, the majority at least, participated in athletics here, and that's a, just a really big selling point of yeah. the university, aside mm-hmm. you know so many other things. But yeah. Um, and then once, once you got here to BV, you decided to be a digi major. Uh, what, what kind of, uh, drove you to that kind of, um, uh, that major? Well, I mean, going into, going into college, I had mm-hmm. been dead set on doing something, working with technology because I've always been technology. I, I think some people kind of see me as a one note guy where I'm, I'm just kind of like the sports guy here at Buena Vista. I do, you know, all the broadcasts shows, I write the articles, et cetera. But I, I really have a passion for, you know, that this stems from video games mm-hmm. and learning technology and interactive storytelling. Mm-hmm. So that had always been a big thing for me. You know, the greatest stories that I can think of that kind of pull at heartstrings are movies and, and video games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it, it always resonates with me. So basically in high school, we had a high school um, video news program. So basically kind of like a – it's a weekly news show. It is pretty pretty high-level stuff. And I got recruited into it at the end of my sophomore year. And I kind of wanted to do it because my brother had been part of that blossoming. um, It was was a newer program. It was called Boone TV. Mm -hmm. And basically, I knew I was going to do it. And I ended up taking the leadership role in that pretty quickly into that. They, they They saw I had some potential in it. And they... The, my two teachers, Ben Brevard and Philip Kramer, had started to push me to say, we're going to start training you for next year. We want you to keep you on the staff. And I liked it. It was making news stories. I, I switched to more oh, – I didn't switch, but I focused on more of a sports role, obviously, because that's what I, I say I'm best at. But it, it just kind of like spurred from there that I like making videos. I like just, you know, like I said, interactive storytelling and making my own content. And from there, I became the head editor. I knew when I got to whatever college I went to, I wanted to focus on something in technology, not really like computer science or anything like that, but like I said, storytelling. And mm-hmm. Buena Vista had kind of like an all-encompassing digital media major, which is a pretty broad term, and the fact that you have so many things you can do with it. Yep. And then coming here, the, the professors wooed me, wooed me over. I mean, all three of them, uh, Jerry, Jamie, and Andrea, mm-hmm. just have all three great programs that they each run. I've been involved with all the three, uh, all the three programs, and yeah, I, I, I think I answered your initial question in that <laughs> it, it stemmed from kind of a, a just initial love for technology. Mm-hmm. I did it in high school. We were we were award winning at that uh, station too. Wow. We were we were really good in the video side, um, and then from there, it's just, just I knew wherever I went, mm-hmm. it had to do something to do with just blossomed from there yeah exactly yeah no it makes makes total sense i mean i think that's just how i mean because a lot of people come in here and they say you know i had radio experience or something like that and then they continue it which is and i had i had never had radio experience oh Um, really no i we didn't have anything to do with radio there like i said i was when i came here i was 
uh, anticipating to vo- focus more on BVTV right. and video, but we have a very different setup and produce very different content than what we did back in Boone yep. and on Boone TV. So I kind of just, you know, when I joined KBVU, I found that I had more of an affinity for being on the radio, and mm-hmm. that's where I've kind of focused, I would say, like, out of the three, I, I work for all three. I kind of focus like forty percent on KBVU. That's kind of yep. where I'm. I'm primarily on right now because I've been, you know, good at what I've been doing. I'd say so. Yep. Yeah. No. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I think that's that's where I kind of came from too. I went from more of a video kind of standpoint to seeing what kind of BBTV involved, and I wanted to be more of the yeah the KBVU side definitely. Um, so I want to kind of branch away from from the BV side, kind of talk more about your personal life. So uh, recently, we've kind of talked about in, in um, outside of the podcast about um, your your affinity for jerseys. I knew, yeah, I knew this was coming. You're wearing <laughs> exactly. one right now. Um, and I wore it just for you, actually. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, it. D-Rose. <laughs> and you have how many now? Uh, I did a count the other day. I'm pretty sure I got them all, but across all sports, I have 41 jerseys. 41 jerseys. Yeah. Where Where did this obsession come from? Uh, just okay. just a love of sports, or was it like, oh, yeah, something specific? Absolutely. Um, I could talk all day probably about my jerseys, uh-huh. but... Back in Christmas of 2015, uh, I believe I was a fresh. No, I would be a sophomore. Mm-hmm. I had. Um, I'm a soccer fan. I'm a fan of a, a lot of sports, obviously, but I'm a. I do have a certain affinity for soccer, having never played it, and it, it, it won me over when I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. And I like a, a team in North London called Arsenal, and they. I started to like them more and more, and as I got more involved with them, I was kind of like putting together a christmas list and they are they're 2015 to 16 jerseys because every every team in soccer has kind of like what the nfl does where it's a home jersey and a away jersey and then they have a third kit that they play in cup games just kind of mix it up and sell uh-huh. more stuff you know right which, i mean it works for me obviously but uh basically i saw these online and they were on amazon for 20 bucks a piece so i'm like I don't know why they're that cheap, but I'm going to buy them. And if there's a problem with them, I'll probably get a refund. They both came in. They were um, near perfect uh, replicas of the actual jersey. No names on the back, which is fine. They were 20 bucks. Yep. And they didn't have the uh, – they're manufactured by Puma, so they didn't have the little Puma logo. But next to that, they're exact perfect replicas. And mm. I was so pleased with these jerseys. And looking back on it, the away kit isn't my favorite kit in the world. <laughs> but it's got that, that nostalgia about it that this is – tied for the first one I ever got. And yeah. so it stemmed from there. And basically I think I had those two jerseys. Sorry, I'm going to basically tell you the story of okay. it. But yeah, go for it. I, I think I had those two jerseys for a while mm-hmm. until maybe my senior year in high school. And one of my best friends, Nate McBride, back home, he had this really nice Tequila Sunset Pete Rose jersey the, for the when he played for the Astros. Yep, yep. And it's such a good looking jersey. I'm like, I asked him where did he get these, and he had all these. He had a Ken Griffey Jr. Mariners jersey, wow. the old teal blue ones. These nice looking jerseys. Yeah. And he referenced this website to me. I'm like, okay, uh, I'll check it out. He's like, just be careful. It's like a, it's like it's like a a wholesale Chinese site. They're fake jerseys, but they're basically 99.9 percent pure. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna see because. Mm. You know, coming hot off of a Cubs World Series victory, yep. I wanted to get a white home Cubs pinstripe jersey with the with the patch on the side, and I got a custom made one with um, Muninori Kawasaki, who is a fringe player for the Cubs during that time, and he was like a he probably played in twelve actual games uh-huh. for the Cubs organization. He played for the I Cubs, but he was a fan favorite. He's just a really funny guy, and I got that jersey, and it was nice. And it went from there. I started getting Cubs jerseys, Steelers ones. I got more Arsenal ones. And then, you know, other jerseys I really like. I got some other NBA ones. I got an old Larry Bird jersey, a USA Dream Team Jordan jersey Mm -hmm. with 23. The Miami Vice jerseys that have surfaced lately, those are so nice. Those are so nice. The black, neon, blue, and uh, it's kind of like purple, lavender. It's so nice. And then I I could talk about all of them. But Uh basically, it just kind of – the site – I thought like, I think it was a Tim Duncan one too. Okay. An old white Spurs Tim Duncan one. Yep. And I was just so pleased with all these like the five that I ordered. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna order more. I haven't been wronged yet, so why not you know keep riding my luck? I was like, when I when I got them, I was really worried that they were gonna be low quality, uh-huh. broken apart, not good looking. Um, right. But no, I was so pleased with every single one of them, and I still am. Um, I'm careful about washing them, but they're all in pristine condition basically, yeah. and there are a bunch of them in my room right now 
probably half my jerseys that I own are in my room right now because I like to wear them out. But I was just pleased with them, and then it kept mm-hmm. going from there. I said, if I can't be wronged yet, I'm gonna. This is gonna be my collection. People collect yeah. shoes, mm-hmm. um, old movies, stuff like that. You know, rep- vintage stuff. I like jerseys. Yeah, I mean, it's something you can wear. It's not something that sits on a shelf. It's something that people give you compliments on, which I do get all the time. Which I, you know, makes me buy more yeah right so have have you ever been now i know i've been i've been starting the jersey craze as well yeah um have you ever had the the comments of quote unquote pick a team or decide already um out wearing this kind of stuff no i i think i know what you're saying right I, no i i'm a through and through arsenal fan hmm. i'm a through and through cubs fan um i have some hawkeye jerseys i'm kind of weaning off of the iowa hawkeyes just because you know i'm in college myself right and i like being a vista mm-hmm. but uh, what this is a through and through Steelers fan. So I've, I have primarily probably 80% of the jerseys I have are for those teams. Yep. But then I have stuff like international jerseys, you know, two, I have two U S men's soccer jerseys. Yep. So Clint Dempsey and Landon Donovan, two of the best players to ever play for us, or excuse me, Michael Bradley, our, our current captain. Yep. Cause I have a Landon Donovan, Seattle Sounders Jersey for the MLS team in uh-huh. Seattle. It's got a nice, you know, I like it. it it's a very nice looking Jersey. It's like yeah. kind of a, a, a camo with, uh, one of the best players to ever play for the United States. Uh-huh. So, and uh, I have a, a Spurs jersey for the for the NBA, etc. A Germany national team jersey for my favorite player in all of soccer, stuff like that. So I've never gotten any negative comments about yeah. any single one of them. I don't think. Okay. But but yeah, and I don't see why I would because I mean they're all nice and people and I I don't pay a lot for them. So yeah, right, exactly. So uh, the one thing I wanted to get into a little bit with 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 you and me kind of talking is um, with March Madness. March Madness is on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, it is on March 17th. The selection committee um, starts to select all the champions who's going to be in and whatnot. Um, and there's a couple of moments I like to uh, kind of, kind of, talk, kind of talk about. I mean, and, and the, the bigger impact of what we see in today. I mean, um, I started watching March Madness back when it was, Oh, and I can't remember exactly the first one. I think it was either the tournament before Villanova won their latest one or the one before that one. Um, but I, I remember watching um, live North Northern Iowa beat Texas yes. in, a, in a buzzard mm-hmm. beater. Um, and one one of my my most fondest memories is watching. Um, I think it was last year, um, Loyal Chicago's Final Four run, yep. which I don't think anybody could have predicted them getting that far. Um, I think only four other teams had made it that far. It was. Um, Virginia Commonwealth, uh, George Madison had made it, and then there's another team. I think it was LSU back in '85. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what 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 are some of your? I mean, absolute favorite March Madness. I know because you're you're more of a football guy yourself. I know that much. I'm mm-hmm. um, in baseball, but um, March Madness. What is what is your absolute like favorite moment um, from what you've seen so far? I had mentioned to you that Texas U and I won. I yep. planted that seed because that's a, that's a homegrown thing. Yep. You know, people were talking about that forever, and the fact that he hit about a 70 footer just kind of lobbed it in and be a huge team. I think, I believe you and I was a 12 seed in that and Texas yeah. was a four. Yep. So, I mean, just an absolutely huge upset on that one that hit home because of a, you know, a local thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember uh, I was on a, a summer vacation down in Branson, Missouri. We watched UNC and Gonzaga, Gonzaga really national championship. That was a great yeah. game. That yeah. Ended on a buzzer beater too. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm kidding. Uh, I think, I mean, UMBC, Last year was fantastic as well. That's one of my favorite ones. It's a lot of a lot of recency stuff, but um, you know, a 16 seed upsetting the one seed in Virginia will never be forgotten. It's the first time it ever happened. Yeah. It could be the last. You don't know, but I remember watching that live, and unfortunately, their run got ended after a while. Yeah, I think it was second round that got beat. Yeah, um, and I remember bro who, but oh my god, and Loyola got beat by Michigan, so their run nope. ended short as well. So some fan favorites got knocked out. And but, the, that yeah. that that year's that year's bracket, I I absolutely hated just because you had teams like Little Chicago going on. Well, actually, I I so one I had Virginia winning one of my brackets that got busted. Yeah, the first round. I had Virginia <laughs> winning the bracket too. So and I and know how it feels so that happened. But I I um I did pick Loyola Chicago to go somewhere because I had I went to you and I for a um, a digital media event hmm. and I met someone who had worked with the um, they, he made hype videos I think for Loyola Chicago hmm. I got his I got his business card and I was looking back and I'm like oh Loyola, Loyola Chicago I know that one so I think I think I had him going to at least 
this round of 16 or sweet 16 Good call. um I, I don't remember if i did or not but that I mean, that was the one that i was kind of watching because i'm like there's no way you know yeah, but then yeah. they go and make the final four with one so, some of the best teams i mean one of the best michigan teams that there has been in quite a while and whatnot so i mean i i'm excited for march madness um I, I I have been keeping tabs on some teams I'm kind of watching for um, with Duke now losing their second time to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. There's some there's some questions of whether or not they're going to even make it past, I would say, even maybe the second round with the way that they've been playing with some of the teams. Um, there's been questions of law, um, as far as Kansas may even making it if far enough into the tournament they even make a dent um and then there's teams like houston that are they have won their first championship since 92 that are going to go somewhere at least um right now it's, it's a little too early but who uh, who's looking like your fan favorite to win the tournament this year it's it's really tough to call at this point if just I wa- because if i wanted to throw some out there i yep. would say the teams that have performed so consistently throughout the year so let's put a tennessee yep a kentucky a duke a unc in there kind of your typical guys yep that'll be in there but i think if i want to talk about a team i want to talk about the team to watch probably k-state k-state so breaking k-state won the big 12 this last week yep breaking kansas's 12 year run Mm -hmm. so the drought for every other team in the 12 is over Mm -hmm. and i think they're going to be a team that has all the momentum in the world i mean you're kind of making history in the big 12 in the past 12 years you know people who have who are less than 12 year old have never seen a world without kansas winning the big 12 so yeah i think they're they're going to be the most exciting team to watch but i think your usual favorites and the four competing for the one seed obviously are going to have good yeah. chances but you know we could see a repeat of what happened last year right well and, and i think the big shocker for some people i mean the Big East champion villanova wildcats i mean the national champions of last year are i don't think they cracked top 25 this year Mm-mm. um very poor this year very very poor this year and i mean i i think that comes at the hands of losing some great seniors that they had last year but the national champions might not even make a tournament run this year if that's the case uh, well uh, well no way are they number one in the big east I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. sure. Nick's Nick, Nick's our uh, resident college yeah, yeah, basketball Nick's, expert. Nick's the expert. Um, but nonetheless, I'm I'm very very excited to see what happens in in March Madness. I'm always tuning it on, seeing what games are happening. Um, and it's it's just a time for it's it's the one time of the year that True TV actually gets viewers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as 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 sad as that is to say. Um, but no, I mean it's 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 definitely an exciting time, and maybe I'll have to get Nick in here. Nick 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 would be able to talk some chat, so yeah, talk some chatter. Beaver to focus on. Yeah, he, <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. We'll talk about it on sports on the edge tomorrow. So. There we go. So sports on the edge on KBVU. Um, so Tanner, I kind of want to wrap this up um, with with the last question that I like to kind of ask people on the podcast. I want to I want to start asking people at the end of the podcast. Um, what does being a BVU Beaver mean to you? It's a loaded question, um, but what what does it mean to be a BVU Beaver to yourself? To me, a big part of looking for a college was having a home away from home, being comfortable where you are, and having that kind of sense of community atmosphere. And I think that's the great thing about a school of Buena Vista's size is that it's basically a glorified bigger high school and the fact that you know all your professors, they know you by name, and they you know, you know all your friends around here that basically become your second family because they're the people you have to resort to helping you out um, making bonds with etc so i think being a bvu beaver is the part of being something bigger than yourself obviously you know as a student athlete i know that as being part of a team you're still being part of something bigger than yourself but it reflects into just the overall community and atmosphere of the school i think our higher ups have done a really good job of promoting just kind of a unified, a sense of unification across the entire board. I think President Merchant has done a really good job since coming in in promoting kind of the general welfare of all the Buena Vista uh, community and as well as Storm Lake. So when you're a beaver, you're not just a part of Buena Vista, you're a part of the surrounding area. You become ingrained in the culture of uh, Buena Vista County as well. So I think just being a Buena Vista beaver is someone who takes pride in wearing blue and gold and white occasionally. <laughs> and just, like like I said, taking pride in being a beaver and part of this general sense of community and know that you're contributing to the school and you're part of something that will matter later on. We're They're building a future generation and we're going to be the people out in the world that are going to do big things when we leave. So I hear you. I hear you. So 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was Tanner Frost here on the first episode of the Beaver Train Podcast. We're going to be coming back here next week, hopefully with a new guest. Um, it'll be Dr. Uh, Wind Goodfriend. Uh, she just got hot off the heels of writing her latest psychology book, as well as a couple of de- uh, interesting trips that we'll talk about on the next episode. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, my name is Tyler Bruner, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And we'll see you next time on the Beaver Train Podcast.